So let's do some applications now. And this is again taking the idea of Newton's third law and everything that we've developed in the previous two sections and now trying to analyze a specific situation. So this is a situation that I particularly like, which is one hand, it's shown here, it's the hand, pushing two boxes on a frictionless surface. Note that we say that the mass of the second box is bigger than the mass of the first box. And the fact that it's on a frictionless surface really simplifies this problem. So that's what we're gonna consider right now. We say that it's pushing and the boxes are accelerating to the right. Uh, later, we'll talk about acceleration constraints, but one thing you should note is that they're both accelerating to the right together. They should have the same acceleration. So the first question you should ask yourself is, what is the system? And again, you can actually make some slightly different choices here. One choice is to say my two boxes are my system and the hand. So you could in fact include the hand not as part of your system, but for this situation we will. So the hand is part of our system. So then, what is the environment? So we see that we have a surface and we have the earth, which will give us gravity, right? So this is gravity. The surface doesn't give us friction because we know it's a frictionless surface, but the surface still gives us the normal force. There's one other thing to be really careful about here. The hand is not floating. It might look like it's floating, but it's not actually floating, right? Hands are attached to arms, especially useful hands. So there's actually an arm here that is also part of the environment because otherwise this hand cannot do anything. So that's important, okay? So now what are the action-reaction pairs? Now one of the ways that you would do this is by actually drawing one of those interaction diagrams. And so if I do that, I have my system and I have my hand, I have block A, I have block B, and we said that the arm is part of the environment, the surface is part of the environment, and then the entire earth is part of the environment. So what forces do we have? The hand interacts with the arm. The hand interacts with block A. Block A interacts with block B. The surface interacts with block A and block B, and the entire Earth with a gravitational force acts on block B, A, and the hand. So what are action-reaction pairs entirely in our system, right? So let's say that our action-reaction pairs, we want to actually see them, so they're in our system. We have this one and we have that one. So we have the hand on A, A on hand block A on B, block B on A. So what do we know about the accelerations? And I've already mentioned this, that we see that the acceleration is to the right. And as long as our hand is in contact with block A and block A is in contact with block B, the acceleration of the hand equals the acceleration of block A equals the acceleration of block B because otherwise they couldn't actually be in contact. So, so far I haven't actually drawn any of the free body diagrams. I've just done a very initial analysis using one of these uh, system diagram, sorry, interaction diagrams. And this is really important. Remember that I could have actually put the hand in the environment and then not worried about acceler um the arm, but depending on what question you are asked, for instance, if you are asked the question, how hard is the hand pushing on block A, you would definitely want it as part of your system. Anything you're analyzing should definitely be part of the system. So now the next step is going to be to draw our free body diagrams. We want to make sure that we correctly identify all of our action reaction pairs and we've drawn that here. So we know that we should be identifying two separate pairs. Remember that each line represents one pair of forces. And we actually will be drawing three free body diagrams, one for each object in our system. So note that there are three free body diagrams here. Each has its own definition of x and y, but they're in agreement. So 
I would be fine with you drawing one definition of x and y to the side, but these all should share the same coordinate systems. Now note for this problem, the book has not drawn the gravitational forces and the uh, normal forces. So in the case where you have those to worry about, your normal force and your uh, gravitational force on these blocks, right, you would have your Fg on B, and then you would have your normal force on B, and remember that those should be equal and opposite because you have no acceleration in the y direction. For the A block, which has a smaller mass, we expect those forces to be smaller, and again, we change the subscripts to make it clear what they are. So you have your normal force on A. Now, the last thing to note is that if you come over here to the hand, we said that we do have gravity acting on it, right? So gravity on hand. But what that means is the arm force, because there isn't a normal force on the hand. The arm is actually what's pulling it up. So in that case, we wouldn't actually want this. We would want this to come up slightly since, and I'll call it arm on H, because that must be balancing out the gravitational force. You must have a positive Y component here. So the book is simplified by only considering X, but I would prefer that you draw every single force involved, both in Y and in X. So the other thing to remember is that we've said that all of these share the same acceleration, right? And we don't actually draw the acceleration vector on our free body diagram directly. But note that these net forces are not equal, right? The net force of B is larger. Why is this? Well, this has a larger mass, but the same acceleration. This has a smaller mass, the same acceleration. So that means that this F net must be bigger. So why does this make sense? If you look at block A, and I've kind of made a mess out of it at this point, it has a force to the right, which is the hand on A, and a force to, on the left, which is B on A. But block B only has A on B. So this is something to be very careful about, is that we don't just say that all of the forces here, the hand on A and the, the block A on B, those forces aren't all equal because you have to have a net force in the x direction for this A block. Now again these dashed lines represent our Newton's third law pair, our action-reaction pair, and the reason you would want to do it is because in this case we have a bunch of different forces in our x direction, and when you go to do a calculation you want to make sure that you understand the ones that must have the same magnitude. So the rightward force on block B must have the same magnitude as the leftward force on block A. The rightward force on block A must have the same magnitude as the leftward force on the hand. But of course, we don't know what the force of the arm is on the hand, so we don't actually need to worry too much about this. The useful part is the constraint that these two blocks have the same acceleration, right? This is largely unknown. We don't actually know what's happening with the arm on the hand. It's still part of our system, the hand, but this part we wouldn't actually be calculating out. We would just use the relationship between these two. So I hope that this is clarified a little bit, um, but the main takeaway here is that you use the relationship between accelerations and Newton's third law, which tells you the relationship between some of these forces, and then you recognize that the net forces on these blocks are not the same because they do not have the same mass.